Well, hello there. I was just cleaning my enormous collection of High Horology watches. Good thing you caught me in time, because I have free stuff for you. The return of the sweepstakes, the first ever international raffle sweepstakes featuring a giveaway watch will be a Rolex Oyster Perpetual Milgauss. And not, not, not an older model, I'm sorry, but it is the GV. I'm not giving away vintage Rolex today, even though I've got it on the table. You are going to be getting a latest production, 116400 GV, 40 millimeter stainless steel, but you gotta be in it to win it, link in the description. I've also got the sign up to meet me in LA at Watch Time LA, May 3rd to 4th. Likewise, you gotta be in it to begin it. Click the link in the description to sign up for Watch Time LA at the Hudson Loft, May 3rd through 4th. Join and in, we've got friends from around the world and that's a great thing because our giveaway is global. Our first ever international Rolex giveaway, Aza 28, Russell 996, Andre Gutierrez, The Watch Lounge, Matt Foster, Monsignor P, Squiggly P, Tom P, Hail Bay. Hillbop, True Lie from Toronto, the watch lounge saying wearing his MC icon tonight, Maurice Lacroix icon tonight in Myrtle Beach, Carlos Ramirez joining us, I believe from Florida, and Daniel T joining in with a little applause emoji, big thanks, Christopher G from Portland, Oregon, Day o, Dave O, Martin N, hi guys, welcome. Let's get started with a new brand. You know I'm a huge fan of independence, and I have been singing the praises of Reservoir Watches of France since the very first press release is two years ago, I am thrilled to finally have one on the table, as we have the Reservoir Cars Collection Supercharged Classic. Now this is a hell of a lot of watch. 43 millimeters in stainless steel, it's an ETA 28242 on, with a 124 piece proprietary module that is a jump hour, a retrograde, and a power reserve. You can see the dial has great depth with the flange sloping down to the dial base, which though it looks chalk white on camera is a sort of cream off white in person, as this is the Supercharged Classic. Now it's inspired by the tachometers as well as the speedometers of vintage sports cars and racing cars. I'm going to throw this one on the wrist because I love this brand. The price is right. This is $3,900 new. It's a small brand out of France. They just received a GPHG nomination for 2000. 18. If you followed the GPHG, you might recall that the Longbridge British Racing Green, which is one of their cars collection models, was nominated for a GPHG category. And in fact, this watch right here features the exact same complication module. Fun, fabulous, and possibly the coolest way to get into a compound complication. Can we, can we improve the focus a little bit, guys? With the retrograde, the jump hour, and the power reserve, which is in the form of an automotive gas gauge down at 6 o'clock. And you can see it's fairly easy to wear. This one's 43, but the Longbridge British Racing Green with the same complication is 39.9, so they have several sizes. Uh, the case back does allow you to see the movement itself. Also, runs the roll call of different features, almost a little bit Grubel forcey like ringing the sapphire. Now, the timepiece has a very cool retrograde that I'm going to demonstrate right now. It is both a retrograde display and a jump hour, so you get all the fun of jumping the hour and entrancing your friends as though you were playing with some sort of Schaefer case Audemars Piguet minute repeater, a Chrono Swiss Delphus, or something like a Gerald Genta. And this watch certainly belongs in that league for sheer fun factor. And again, for under four grand, this is as good as it gets for a true lifetime wearable and serviceable luxury watch. Guys, I am a huge fan of Reservoir of France, and this one has my stamp of approval. Jumping straight back to our chat box, I can see Sean F. is late to the show, but glad he's here. Justin Hill is saying that Reservoir is a cool piece. Russell996 is saying Jump Hour and Retrograde gets his thumbs up. And Kim Bowen is joining from Whitehall. Mason1 saying, goodness me, I finally caught one of these live. I'm in Lancashire, UK. And the Watch Lounge saying, that is definitely a different looking watch. Cool though. Let's jump from the exotic to the more familiar, albeit in a form you might not expect. We're going with Omega, we're going with the Speedmaster, but we're going with an all-time great. This is the 1973 2000-piece limited edition Omega Speedmaster 125, the 125th anniversary Omega Speedmaster mineral glass, tritium 
dial, blocky 70s style case, lobster style bracelet, and you can see this one is untouched. Look at the definition of these case flanks. Get as close as you want right there, Justin, because this watch right here looks as though it came out of the Omega Factory Museum. The original finishing, the original parting lines, all of the original metal volume, and look at that dial. You could see, like my Zin Easy M1, it uses a Lemania caliber with, well, my Zin has a 7750 that's been modified to look like an old Lemania caliber. This is the real thing. Lemania 1041, or I should say it's the Omega 1041 based on the Lemania 1340 with a radial 60 minutes display, 24 hour subdial at 9 o'clock, chronograph hours, and of course center chronograph seconds, all of this with a chronometer certificate as this 2000 piece limited edition was history's first ever chronometer certified automatic winding chronograph just four years after the Zenith El Primero became the very first automatic winding chronograph. This one became the first such watch to earn a COSC certificate. The Omega Caliber 1040 is the standard Lamagna 1340. The 1041 featured here is five position adjusted to receive a chronometer certificate. I'll throw this one on the wrist because this thing was not just the first COSC automatic chrono, it was arguably the first truly oversized sports watch. This, too, a full 20 years before the first civilian Panerai hit the market. You can see this thing is not of the 2000s, even though it has the wrist presence to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore chronograph, and for that matter, it has both the style and the substance to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Royal Oak Offshore chrono or an Hublot Big Bang Unico. This thing is incredible. I've never seen one in this condition. It has the 1221 bracelet and the whole thing, the bracelet, the links, the case, the clasp, looks like it came straight off the boat from Switzerland, lost in a time warp for the last four plus decades. I can't believe I've got one of these on the table tonight. It's the first I've seen and I might be forced to take that one off the market. I'm thinking about it. You know I've always been an Omega man. Jumping straight in, high and rising, asking when did COSC certification start? Early 1970s. Before that it was handled by the local observatories and the Bureau Officiel, which were the regional certifying authorities, COSC became a national certifying standard in the early 1970s, and this would have been one of the first COSC chronometers. Jumping straight in, I can see we have Ian Moses joining in from Manila. Thank you for getting up early with me. All right, from vintage Omega to modern Omega, and as dark as dark gets, as in Spinal Tap, you can't get any blacker than black. And this is the 2015 Omega Speedmaster Dark Side of the Moon, black, black. Showing, this is, is, is that two consecutive shows, two consecutive Spinal Tap references? Showing Ublo how all black is done. This one is full ceramic, dial, tack, and case. So almost scratch proof. This is that black hole that they photographed the other day. This is it, the singularity on your wrist. The watch does feature an Omega 9300 vertical clutch column wheel chronograph caliber on the back, a coaxial chronometer with a 60 hour power reserve. So mechanically it's the same as the dark side, but you can see everything on this dial has been completely blacked out. Indices, hands, sub-registers, even the Omega marquee itself. The dial is of ceramic but media blasted. 44.25 millimeters and you can see on the wrist, though it's a big watch, at under 50 millimeters lug to lug it wears nice and compact. So that one sits well on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist and ceramic is very light. Okay, enough Omega. Let's jump over to the Rolex side of the house. This is Rolex from a kinder, gentler era with a 950,000 serial number just before Rolex serial numbers rolled back in 1953. This is the original turnograph. 36.5 millimeters in diameter. This is the Rolex Turnograph, not date just Turnograph, Turnograph as a standalone model, reference 6202. It beat the Rolex Submariner to market by just a few months to become the first modern era. We're not talking about the Centrograph or the Zerograph, but the first modern era series production Rolex rotating bezel sports watch. And folks, that is an original chapter ring gilt style radium dial. Break out your pancake Geiger counters because you're gonna need them. This is the real deal. And you can see it even features the German silver alloy bezel with the original red triangle. A wonderful little piece on the wrist. It's a date just sized rotating bezel Rolex sports watch that started the line before the Thunderbird. Hell, before the Submariner. This is the original legend. 
jumping right in. I can see we've got friends joining from all over the place. Kim Bowen saying the Omega is just too black. I agree, black, black is the idea. And Tristan P saying you don't, you can't get any blacker than black. Tim Masso 2019. I can't claim that one. That's Spinal Tap. And then I can see right here we've got Tim Masso sunglasses joining in. They've become sentient. And Pilot style one two three saying we have some serious vintage on the table let's jump back to the modern era and Jajer Lacoult we had a question about JLC because G-W-O-S-A-P-A-T is asking, Tim, do you think JLC will be bring back the Master Compressor Series anytime soon? I hope they do, but until that happens, we've got the classics. This is the SIHH 2010 debut, Jajera LeCoult Master Compressor Diving Navy Seals Automatic. The only Navy Seals series watch that the Navy Seals themselves actually requested. Now, they say in the Navy, dynamite comes in small packages. Not all of those seals are huge guys. And so the 44, 45, 46 millimeter cases were just too much. This one, 42 millimeters in stainless steel, a 1500 piece limited edition with the free sprung automatic caliber 899, 43 hour power reserve, 300 meter diving depth, get super close to the dial if you can. Guys, JLC actually doing the math. One of the only watch companies that actually noted, and you could see down at six o'clock, which is at the top of your screen, that 300 meters is not 1,000 feet, and Jager LeCoult noting it right there on the dial. I love it. Precision. That's what you expect from a watch brand. Master compressor crown, one half turn, unlocked. One half turn, 300 meter water resistance. And you can see on the case back, the only Navy SEALs overt branding, the warfare device of the Navy SEALs, the Eagle, with the anchor, the gun, and the trident. A uh, timepiece that is wonderfully wearable with a Wonderful unidirectional rotating dive bezel with ceramic insert and Polaris style dial font and indices. Here you're going to hear the bezel. I'm going to hold it up to the mic. It is very crisp. I love that watch. That's the best of the Navy SEAL series. Jumping straight back, I can see Tim with two M's from Holland is joining in. Welcome and thanks for staying up late with us. Let's jump into a smaller brand that is neither French nor Swiss, but dual citizenship. Established back in 1992, Bell & Ross for its first 10 years featured watches that were made by Zinn for Bell & Ross. But from the early 2000s, the company began to cut its own path, making its own watches at its own Swiss factory and designing its own styles at its Parisian headquarters. And this is the 2018 500-piece limited series instrument BR0394 Horolum. This watch is all matte finished. As you can see, sandblasted bezel, sandblasted case, sandblasted dial, 100 meters water resistant, 42 millimeters. This is the instrument style case that Bell & Ross first debuted back at Basel World 2005. In 2007, they launched the 42 millimeter version you see here. And if you get really close, and I mean really close, you can see it features a Panerai style sandwich dial and also not only is the dial itself sandblasted, but there's even a blasted finish on the center of the hands. Attention to detail, a strong suit with Bell & Ross. Every hand, every feature of the style fully loomed, even sub-registers, even chronoseconds. You throw it on the wrist, it's easy to wear. An all-the-time chronograph that somehow is only 12.5 millimeters thick. This is a lovely piece from Bell & Ross that's appropriate with any attire on any wrist, any occasion. A sports watch and a passable dress model, a lovely piece and again, a design house special from a company that's a design house first and a watch brand second. But I say that as a term of endearment. Jumping into the chat box, I can see Jeremy Lim saying, I don't like the square cases. Don't know about you, but it just feels a bit too angular. He's a fan of the Cartier Santos tank, however. Speaking of traditional Swiss watchmaking, and it doesn't get any more traditional than Cartier, we're going in the same shall we say, aesthetic tradition, but from a much newer upstart brand. Fine watchmaking, as in the era of the Cartier CPCP, and its contemporary, the CPCP, was the original LUC series. Cartier CPCP launched in 1998. It was Cartier fine watchmaking for the modern era, and that was the year Chopard, through its Louis Ulysse Chopard manufacturer line, launched the first Quattro. Caliber 198 launched 1998. Twin mainspring barrels 
with power reserve for nine days. Geneva Hallmark, ultra thin caliber, 198, manual wind, power reserve, adjusted in five positions like a chronometer, with glorious striated Cote de Genève, black polished screws and swan's neck regulator. On the dial side, you can see extraordinary rose lathe work. This is not stamped guilloche. This was done with true engine turning. The explosive rayon billow from the center, the concentric engine turning satin finish of the hour track. You could see that the dial for the radial seconds and radial date down at six o'clock, nicely counterbalancing the eight day indication of the power reserve. Don't let it deceive you. This watch will run for nine to ten days on a full wind. Quattro, because it features two mainspring barrels that are stacked, so effectively four mainspring barrels via twin stacked barrels. 38 millimeters. This yellow gold watch is glorious traditional Swiss watchmaking, as good as anything from Patek Philippe, as good as anything from Vacheron. A timepiece hugely underrated. These are the next frontier of modern classics and collectibles. Jumping right in, I can see Tommaso Sunglass saying that's a lovely Chopard, and Jesus841, or maybe it's Jesus, saying LUCs are underrated. Russell996, a Porsche Maven, Maven and High Horology Connoisseur saying that that is a nice looking Chopard. Dustin Van Patten, I love LUC's line, Quattro. Let me show you the case back one more time, let you see why this is the Quattro. I don't know how close we can get, but these twin barrels, and you can see their pivots, they're actually stacked. So there's a barrel on top of a barrel, and a barrel on top of a barrel, hence Quattro. Glorious. Swiss watch making at its best. Now jumping into another brand that got its start in the 1990s. Chopard's much older than the 90s, but the LUC line was launched in 1996. And in 1994, Alanga Unzona of Saxony, a revived brand from the 19th and early 20th century, debuted. In 2017, it launched this model, the Saxonia Automatic from the Blue series, white gold, 38.5 millimeters, blue galvanized dial, and glorious. A timepiece that wears slim on the wrist. Would you believe it has a three-day automatic winding power reserve and a profile that slender? A wonderful timepiece and a counterpoint to the Chopard from the German side of the border. This is a lovely piece and the ultimate dress watch. I can't think of anything that would improve this timepiece. Looking at the case back, you can see you get all of that and then some. Longa giving you a gloriously decorated decorated caliber L086. Note that it's both a solid gold rotor and then a solid platinum mass, and that the platinum mass is on the outside of the gold rotor, and they're joined together with fired blued screws. This is a lovely watch, beautifully executed. Alango Unzona Saxonia from the Blue Series 2017. Jumping back into the box, Russell is a fan of the blue ALS, Edward Ledden of Sweden, saying, I wish I could marry Alanga. If you get married, make that your groom's gift. And I could see True Lie saying, I love that Langa. Jeremy Lim, that dial, I love it. And I can see Henfang Wang singing Pure Class and Mark M joining in from Australia. Thank you for getting up early with me in Australia and the Pacific Rim, guys. Let's talk about another independent that I adore. I cannot get enough of De Bethune of Lauberson. They're in the Canton of Vaux. They make 150 watches per year, and this is arguably their signature model. Launched in 2016, the DB28 Kind of Blue is a 42.7 millimeter, fire blued grade five titanium, six day power reserve spaceship for your wrist. It features the company's signature floating lugs, and you can see the floating lugs change the geometry from 53 millimeters lug to lug to 58. There are two sizes of lug. They can retrofit as necessary. You could see the balance, and I didn't wind the watch specifically so you could see the balance. Let's get super close, guys. Super close on the dial side. The balance is blued titanium with white gold masses. They make their own balance. They make their own hairspring. You can see the triple parachute shock protection system. Shock protection, shock protection, shock protection. Three shock springs on the full balance bridge. And note the balance bridge is both black polished and then fire blued. There's a titanium center bridge, black polished and blued over the double mainspring barrel. 
Power reserve on the case back, a six day power reserve. Look at that engine turning. Look at that perlage across the back. Let me see if I can get the light to catch it. This is as good as it gets. This is definitely avant-garde. This is not for everyone. This is not perhaps the everyday watch. This is the everyday watch if you're a starship commander. Nevertheless, Check out that hidden power reserve indicator on the dial side. This is as good as independent watchmaking gets, and Denis Flageolet is the mad scientist of watchmaking. If F.P. Journ is the Thomas Edison, the establishment innovator and inventor, then Denis Flageolet is the Nikola Tesla, the mad scientist of modern high horology. You can see the watch wear as well. It's less than 11 and a half millimeters thick on the wrist, so it's not a thick watch. You can see it's a bullhead winder. It's an absolute dream. It wears weightless. They make about 10 of these per year, 150 watches total. So the DB28 won the Aguidor at the 2011 GPHG and it has become the signature style, but this kind of blue edition from 2016 is the most distinctive. With that Day Bethune blue, this watch is a dream, and the best thing about it is that Day Bethune can restore the blue finish if it ever gets scratched. Jumping into the box, we can see that, oh my goodness, uh, B and S saying laugh out loud, everyday watch for a starship commander, the better to wage war on the outer galactic rim in your Terran battlecruiser. Or, perhaps I should say, with that watch, your Protoss carrier. Jumping straight into the box, Rick TikTok saying, Day Bethune, now you're talking. The Yellow Tones DB28 was the best looking watch in the world at Basel and is the best looking watch in the world right now. It's true, that watch could reduce your Richard Mille to a beater. Let's talk about something that is completely different from anything else we've featured on the program in a while. From Devon Works of California, made in the USA, it's the Devon Tread 2 Chronograph. This is the Tread 2 Shining. Now the watch across the wrist is 41.5 millimeters and it's about 56 lug to lug with the tonneau case. You can see it wears easily in spite of its size. The watch has optical sensors. Uh, it features optical sensors to center the indices inside the frames for the minutes and the hours. The watch features two motors, a thermocompensated quartz caliper, a microprocessor that runs the chronograph and remembers the time while the chrono's running or the watch is in sleep mode. Let's turn this one on. Now you can see right now it's in power reserve mode. So you can see it's between 50% and 0% battery. You wake it up. And now it displays the time. Now you hold the actuator down. It's in constant seconds mode. So you can see it doesn't show you the minutes. It's six and constant seconds. I'm going to hold it up to the mic so you can hear what it sounds like because it is a very vocal watch. Now what we're going to do, we're going to put it back and we're going to turn it into a chronograph. Now it becomes a mono pusher chronograph and I start the chronograph tick. Granted, it can only register up to 12 minutes because the hour counter doubles as your minutes register when it's in chronograph mode. And this is a timepiece that I absolutely love. It has a seven to 14 day power reserve depending on whether you're using it in constant seconds mode. It charges inductively using a lithium ion battery that is actuated by a included inductive charger. I love these things. They're not traditional high horology, but they are modern luxury horology. A fusion of electronics and mechanics Everything that you see in here actually comes from aerospace suppliers, and the rollers pivot on unlubricated ruby bearings, so real money was spent here. It's not for everyone, but it's for me. I love this brand. An American independent watch brand. Jumping right in, Abdul saying, I don't know which would be more futuristic, this or the Day Bethune. And I can see the watch lounge saying, not a big fan aesthetically, but I can appreciate the craftsmanship that goes into it. And then Naresh Pape saying, cool, is there an electronic regulation element for the Devon? Yes, there is. Like a Rolex Oyster Quartz or a modern Breitling Super Quartz, it is thermocompensated. The microprocessor can adjust for increased or decreased temperature extremes. It can also remember the time when it's not in operation, and it has the ability to optically sense where the belts are and I'll show you we'll show it I'll, as I talk I'll show it to you again but it can optically sense where the belts are so it physically knows where they're located so that the seconds always line up correctly so it actually adjusts the belts which are made of nylon with fiberglass reinforcement and if this system looks familiar to pilots especially your older pilots it's because it's the same aerospace supplier that used to supply analog belt displays 
for cockpit clocks, altimeters, and instruments for Boeing 747s and Boeing aircraft. Okay, jumping back into the chat box right here, I can see we got a lot of folks who are interested in the Devon, and uh, you know they can't quite adapt to the difference factor right there. It's just a little too out there. Warm up to it like I did. You'll love it in time. It's different and it's completely without pretense. I love the fact that the company's like, look, we were established in 2010. We're not going to pretend that we were established in 1735 and we've been in business forever like Blancpain does. Blancpain was established in 1983-1982 by Jean-Claude Biver. That was a dead brand. This brand doesn't astroturf its history and I love that. Plus, if you need to service a watch, it takes like two weeks with these guys. Jumping right in, let's talk about something that is perhaps more in the mode of favoritism that we find on this show. You guys like classicism, you like independence, and like me, you love Moser. This is the 2017 to present H. Moser and C. Pioneer Center Seconds in Stainless Steel. 42.8 millimeters in stainless steel with blue-black fume gradient dial. This thing will blow almost any sports watch from French Switzerland out of the water. Made in Schaffhausen, it's the 1500 watch a year rival to IWC, but given the fact that these guys make everything except their rubies, their sapphires, and their straps, I'm not sure even IWC can compete with this level of vertical integration. Throw it on the wrist, automatic winding, three-day power reserve, 120 meters water resistant, easy to wear on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, fully loomed, water resistant, in-house caliber, as good as it gets because not just in-house caliber, in-house hairspring, in-house balance wheel, in-house escape wheel, in-house dial, everything about this watch made in Switzerland and as good as it gets, Moser, the standard of the industry. And frankly, for a company that only makes 1,500 watches, I'm bewildered by the range of styles. This is the Heritage Pilot Bucherer Blue Edition, 42 millimeters in stainless steel. This will put the Patek Philippe 5522A back in the case. You have a smoked fume dial, argent brown. You can see it starts silver at center and becomes a brown bronze at its edge, fully loomed with broadsword style hands at center and traditional Arabic numerals with a railroad style seconds and minutes track outboard. You can see that it features Bucherer blue on the case back, not just on the rotor, but also on the balance bridge. Bucherer, established 1888, is the largest luxury watch retailer in Switzerland. This is the same three-day automatic caliber that you'll find in the Pioneer, but in an entirely different case. This is high style. This is as good as a vintage idiom pilot's watch gets, and you can see it drapes over the wrist with almost wire style lugs, a glorious piece, and very practical automatic winding and fully loomed. This could easily be your daily watch. Right here we have Bud, let's rock on to Patek Philippe. Hmm, let's see, what Patek Philippe do I have on the table tonight? I'm not sure I've got Patek, but I've got the new Patek, or at least it should be considered the rival to Patek Philippe because its namesake, Laurent Ferrier, was once a lead complication specialist at Patek Philippe. This is the Laurent Ferrier Galley Square Micro Rotor. Square case, stainless steel, and you could see a sensational sunburst blue. Not just sunburst blue, but sunburst robin's egg blue with a ghosted brand logo. It's almost too modest. White gold hands in Asagai or Spear style. You could see white gold indices, including a double index at 12 o'clock. If you note very carefully, there's actually a railroad style minutes track out board and a sector style hours track, but you can miss it. Turn it over and you can't possibly miss the gloriously finished caliber FBN 22901. Let me remove my fingerprints from, from this one because it deserves an unobstructed view. Jumping back to my macro camera, you can see this is as good as it gets. Paul based solid gold micro rotor, three day power reserve, double direct impulse escapement operating completely unlubricated, overcoil hairspring, free sprung balance, and finish that's on par with anything from Vacheron or Patek. I would even go so far as to say this is to a higher standard than you'll find in a standard Patek Philippe 5296 automatic Calatrava. This would be my easy choice. 41 millimeters in stainless steel. This is not a petite watch. Beautifully executed on the case back. You can see why Laurent Ferrier has been GPHG laureate so early into its existence. Only established as a brand in 2008, bringing its first watches to market in 2010. On the wrist, 
41 millimeters, full sized, not oversized, and certainly not undersized. This watch has a lot of personality. Jumping back into the box, Tommaso Sunglasses saying nice spread today. John Watchsmith saying Laurent Ferry is just class. Off to do the lottery. Recommended. In this case, it'll be worth it. JBO Surf of Adelaide just says boom. And I can see right here, we have BS saying damn with an implied exclamation mark. Jumping straight into another independent. We are running the table with sexy blue dial independence tonight as we have the H Moser and C Venturer Big Date Purity, 41.5 millimeters in white gold. This was a 2018 limited series of 50 pieces. Check out the flash date. This is a bi-directional rotating quick set date that jumps at the stroke of midnight. And I mean the stroke of midnight. You can change it at midnight too. You cannot break this date by setting it at the wrong time. This features a smoked funky blue dial, their term, not mine, that has both a gradient fade and a sunburst texture. Explosive, minimalist, and glorious with a case back view. HMC 100, manufacture movement, Case back power reserve indicator, double crested Cote de Genève, mirrored unglage, black polished screws, 18,000 vibration per hour balance, full bridge, free sprung, solid gold escapement, and twin mainspring barrels giving a nine day power reserve. They promise seven days. Reality, German Swiss understatement, under promising and over delivering. Nine days of power reserve. This watch will run for a week and two days throwing it on the wrist. You can see why they call it the purity. It is just that, gloriously unadorned. This watch takes its blue dial for all it's worth, making it the central focal point of this timepiece. Gloriously white precious metal. You can see that this watch does battle with the best of Langa, the best of Patek Philippe, dare I say even the best of Laurent Ferrier, keeping up with the Joneses in the independent space. This is a company again that makes 1,200 to 1,500 watches a year, and this is a 50 piece limited series. Get them while they're available. And in fact, that's a watch of which we have only one example. So once they're gone, that one is gone. Jumping straight to the table, I'm gonna showcase perhaps the establishment name in Independence, um, because F.P. Jorn, love him or loathe him, has changed the industry. And the watches he's made have been innovative, desirable, and undeniably successful. We were talking about GPHG nominations and wins. Well, back in 2007, the Santagraph Souverain took the title. Of the ultimate chronograph for the 2007 model year, one one hundredth of a second foudroyant. The watch manual wind with an 80 hour power reserve later entered the line sport collection, 42 millimeters in titanium. This is the version that's been available since 2014 when the line sport Santagraph became titanium. Full strap, easy to wear, wears like a second skin and easy to wear on a small wrist as you can see. This watch features a titanium case and an aluminum movement. Yes, an aluminum movement. I realize pictures or it didn't happen, so I'm gonna have to show you exactly of which I speak. PVD coated solid aluminum bridges and plates. FP, I know you love to have the last word in an argument. I've experienced that firsthand. And the FP Journe Santagraph Line Sport has the last word tonight. Remember guys, I'm giving away a Rolex. Link in the description, our first international sweepstakes. And sign up, link in the description, to join me in LA May 3rd to 4th at the Hudson Loft for Watch Time LA. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks to you, thanks to my crew, everyone who got up early or stayed up late, double thanks. Time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on. Thank mm -hmm. you.